everybody, welcome back to the Overland Essentials. I'm Brian. I'm Levi. And we're going to talk to you guys about suspension. This is our first episode of our JKU Overland Builds. And we wanted to really touch base with you guys and, and talk to you about of the trial and errors that we have seen with, with the suspension components that we have. One of the things that you'll find in all Jeep JK suspensions are control arms, shocks, um, springs, sway bars, sway bar links, and track bar brackets or adjustable track bars. Um, but we want to really focus on cool springs uh, and why you know we've gone through the array of cool springs that we have. Um, I started out with Rubicon Express Pro or Progressive Rate coils on their Sport Series kit. Uh, it was new. Kind of a new thing, I wanted to give it a shot, so I thought, what the heck, you know, I ordered it in, I got it, put it installed, got it installed, and I mean, within just a few days, we left for Colorado, and right off the bat, loading it up, it was not the right fit for me. Right. Uh, we were already on bump stops before we even left the driveway. Uh, I should have did something prior to that, but I thought, you know, we'll give it a shot. Had about one inch of up travel, I think, actually, before it hit the uh, bump stops. It was a, wasn't a horrible trip, but you can definitely tell that the bump stops were there during our trip. Um, moved on to linear rate Rubicon Express. Uh, you know, thinking that maybe the linear rate spring would, would hold more weight, and it really didn't do much. I loaded it up, went to South Dakota, and on our way to South Dakota in a parking lot of a hotel, I had to add two inch spacers. Um, just because it was already you know, done. It couldn't go anymore. Like, again, maybe, I, I don't even think I had one inch of travel after the linear eight springs uh, from Rubicon Express. Um, and then once I added the two inch spacers, it gave me a little bit more. And I'll show you pictures of, of what it looked like just sitting there with the springs on the bump stops. Uh, so immediately after spring, or our trip to South Dakota and, and through the Badlands, um, I came home got on the internet, got on the forums, and started talking to some other individuals. The, the owner of Synergy Suspension reached out to me, said, I have a set of coils that, you know, you can give it a shot. Um, I bought these, he sent them out pretty quickly, threw them on my Jeep, uh, and went to Colorado. Uh, was the next trip. And it did. It was it worked out great. However, I looked like uh, my buddy used to call it stink bugging. Um, <laughs> It looked like, you know, unloaded my Jeep was about four and a half inches of lift in the front and maybe two and a half in the, in the rear. Or, excuse me, four, half, four in the rear and two and a half in the, in the front. I uh, can't even give, give it that hot rod look, you know. Um, and I ran that way for a long time. I ran it that way for a while and every time I'd put a load in it um, and wheel it, I noticed some, some weird um, hopping almost in the rear. I'd come over a whoop or a bump and the whole rear of my Jeep wanted to kind of come up over me, and it was just not the right setup. And I tried different shock setups. Um, I went with the, the Falcon 2 ones, uh, got rid of my, the, the Bilsteins that I ran, uh, the Fox, I had Fox on there, uh, and the Falcons have definitely outshined them all. Um, and I'm still running factory control arms, geometry brackets, uh, different con uh, setups in the front, with the track bar brackets and things. Uh, and now, we've, we're running the, the TerraFlex Outback. And I'll let you talk kind of how we got there. Yeah, so, you, you know, we've had conversations on this a, a lot since we started this, you know, this company, the Overland Essentials. You know, we really started in the off-road scene. Mm -hmm. um, we are really big on that. Um, you were a little more into it than I was. Like, you had the big the, rig, the, the big rig and, you know, towed, towed all your off-road vehicles out yep. there. Mine was always a daily driver. Um, I've always been a big fan of metal cloak. Uh, I love metal cloak components. I love their coils. I love their their their. I love their whole system. Um, and off roading, they performed perfectly. I, mean, I like the fact that it was a longer coil when I was off roading. I didn't have to worry about it full droop. You know that I was going to have a coil just fall off of my Jeep. Uh, so I've always stuck with metal cloak. And I thought whenever we started venturing over into the overlanding portion of it, that it was going to I was going to get the same type of productivity out of it as I did off-roading and right. I realized real quickly as you start uptaking the amount of weight that you put on your Jeep for your overlanding trips uh, 
not all coils are created equally. Um, so I moved over from metal cloak to AEV um, because of the sag that I was getting with everything that I started to add and build and put on my Jeep from a rooftop tent to a rack, altar rack, you know. Uh, and you went with the AEV standard spring. I did. I went with the AEV standard spring, which was a great spring. It didn't sag as much as the metal cloak did. But it still wasn't what everybody was talking about, which was a heavy-duty spring. Everybody right. that we talked to, you know, we were at Easter Jeep Safari, and we probably spent, I bet we spent two hours talking to the owner of AEV uh, about how they design their rigs to do what they do. And all he kept talking about was heavy, his heavy-duty coil. And we actually got to ride around in one of yeah. the four doors that had a heavy-duty coil. And as we looked, they only had a four-inch heavy-duty coil. That's the lowest height that they make it for. And what caught our eye, Brian, was that... He had a Jeep JK out there that was converted into like an RV, and it was, we were like, well, how in the heck is that not sagging? You know, and, and that's what kind of got the conversation going, and he told us, that, hey, it's got the four-inch heavy-duty coils in it. Right. And so, I started thinking, though, we, you know, we had a discussion about maybe heavy-duty is what we need to move to, but me and you had always talked, I'm sure, I'm sure a lot of people have, that heavy-duty automatically makes it sound like your daily driver rideability is going to be miserable. Like my old dually. Yeah, like it's yeah. just going to ride like a tank. And nobody wants that, especially if you daily drive your vehicle. So, we also talked about the height that the their heavy duty coil came in at 4 inches. I didn't want to be at a 4 inch lift with my Jeep, with what we do. So, we started doing some shopping around uh, and doing some, you know, some conversing with some other companies and stuff. And we actually stopped by Terraflex. Um, and yep. you can talk about that because you've known yeah. Terraflex. Yeah, so, I've known, I've known Terraflex. Uh, the guys from Terraflex, Scott, and, and uh, a couple other guys, and, you know, they, just talking to them and, and going out to their meet and greet and just kind of shooting the pool, it just led us to what they have as the Terraflex Outback coil. And they said, hey, give these a shot, call us when you get back, and, and we'll see what we can do. So that's what we did. We called um, as soon as we got back from, from Easter Jeep Safari, and... You know, I ordered mine and, and actually had them on my Jeep first, um, which, I mean, not long after, I would say within a week or two, you had yours. But we were, uh, I was so impressed right off the bat going to those those springs. And we're not affiliated with Terraflex at all. And no sponsors, no anything. We we do believe in their product. Um, but again, we also believe in Metal Cloak. We also, you know, I'm, I'm a fan of Rubicon Express still. Um, and there are other great suspension companies out there. Um, you know, we just wanted to talk to you guys about how we got to where we're at today. And that's running the Outback, or the Terraflex Outback coils. Three inches, um, which was the right height that we wanted. And, and believe it or not, that three inch... Feels about, it's pretty tall. It's pretty tall. It's taller than my three and a half inch Rubicon Express and the three and a half inch Metal Cloak. Um, so I would say, realistically, it did lift us um, around, right around the four inch mark, a little under a four inch mark, um, maybe a true three and a half, um, and, and I'm okay with it. it. It gives it that right, perfect ride height for 37s with flat fenders. I had it on 35s um, without the flat fenders, and I think it, it did really well. Yeah. Um, well, our Arizona trip that we did, we both that's the first trip that we took whenever we had the Outback coils on. Um, but we're both running Falcon shocks. I'm running the three threes on mine. Um, that's the first trip that we took with them, and that's the first trip that I've ever taken with a, a suspension that I didn't feel like there was a limit to it. Right. Uh, it was able to hold all the weight that we packed in for that trip. Um, I had zero sag. Um, and like Levi said, we're not affiliated with them, so we're not pitching you to buy Outback coils. What we're trying to do is to save you guys a little bit of time and maybe a little bit of money, because all this adds up, uh, to be able to... Maybe step back and do some research that maybe we probably should have done whenever we started uh, venturing over into overlanding uh, to maybe save you a little bit of time and a little bit of money. Yeah, absolutely. That's where we're at today. You know, I carry a lot of stuff on my vehicle. A heavy Gobi roof rack, a heavy Ultra rack, um, refrigerator. I have an internal rack that we made, you know, from plywood, from the base plate to our gear. Um, you know, nothing's light when it comes to this. It's not like we're backpacking through the Alpine or something. We're, we're taking our vehicles with our family and we're spending, you know, a, a certain amount of time out there self-sustaining in the woods um, in the, you know, in the middle of nowhere. So the equipment that we bring is, is a lot and it's heavy. Um, and, you know, that's kind of where we're at, you know, in the, and I even added the, the Hellwig sway bar to mine. Early in my, my journey of suspension travels, 
And it made a big difference as well. And I did that right before Colorado trip. Um, we threw the Helix spray bar on there. Um, and instantly, I already had the tent and everything mounted. And instantly, I could feel the difference between the body roll. Um, and then, you know, we, we did the 3-3 three, three shocks like he was talking about. When you crank those, those shocks up to really stiff, it, it almost eliminates body roll. Uh, between the sway bars and, and things like that. Um, and like Brian was saying, this is, this is not anything to say, hey, this is exactly what you need to buy. I say do the research because like he said, we did not. We're coming from a rock crawling background where, where the soft suspension, a lot of suspension travel, um, you know, body roll is not really a thing whenever you're topless and, and no doors and, or running a soft top or anything like that. You don't really think about body roll. Right. Um, I mean, if you guys watch the Baja trucks and stuff, that, that's a ton of body roll. But with the overlanding concept and the overlanding builds that we've done, a lot of our weight is way up high. Um, 180 pounds in a tent, and it's above my hard top. Um, not including the water and the, the annex and all that other stuff I'm I able to strap to the top of my Jeep. Um, it's crucial that you pick the right suspension setup. Um, for your for your journeys and your rigs and what you're going to build and what you plan on doing and You know, we did not do that at the beginning and that's why we're starting this series to talk to you guys about it Well, and I think it's important to mention too that you can get the right suspension set up for what you're going to do for uh, The right cost you don't have to spend a ton of money to get your your vehicle overland capable um, The reason we have so many coil springs out here is because it's probably the most important component that you can put on your vehicle yep. To get your vehicle ready for that overland adventure um, you know, I've always said if you're going to spend money on something like shocks and coils are probably the two most important things that you can spend on. Right. Like you mentioned before, like you're still running stock control arms, yeah. and your vehicle's gone everywhere that mine's gone. And I'm running full adjustables, upper, lower, everything, metal cloak. Uh, I've got adjustable everything, um, and those geometry baggots that you put on, literally, we're in the same exact yeah. boat. I put and it saved you hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Yeah. To be I put ready. geometry brackets on a rear sway bar relocation bracket, the synergy. Um, Dragon flip that came with a sway bar bracket in the front, and that's it. It's all I've done to, to my control arms and things like that, and it drives great. Yep. Um, it, it handles well. I, I, like you said, I've gone to things and I've pushed my Jeep to the limit, and that might be eventually what I go with is some upgraded control arms. Um, but for the most part, I'm happy with it. Um, yep. It's it's done really well, and I'm happy with the setup that we have now. And I think that's important to caveat on that with the Outback coils. You know, I was very nervous that the Outback coils were going to be an extremely stiff, rough riding coil where you just weren't going to enjoy your ride with it at all. Yep. Um, Me too. That's the same thought right off the bat. So, oh my God, I'm going to a heavy, heavy duty coil. This thing's going to ride like my dually did, you know, when it was empty. Uh, as soon as I put weight on it, you know, it's going to ride well. But it's not the case, is it? But I think it's important to capture that not every heavy duty coil is exactly the same. Right. This is a heavy duty set coil. Um, AEV makes a heavy duty set coil, which we don't, we haven't ran, we haven't owned, but we did ride in a four door JK uh, that had a set of the heavy duty coils on it. And I'm telling you, it was stiff. Like that was a stiff, uncomfortable ride. Now it had a Hemi in it, so we didn't care about it being stiff. <laughs> we just wanted to hot ride it. But it was a very stiff ride. Um, these Outback coils that we're using, they don't feel stiff. Oh, it's they feel very controlled, and you mentioned earlier about how with the wrong setup, when you would go over an obstacle, and let me throw this out there, like we've kind of coined a term that we like to call overroading because we don't just stick with back the normal road, back road trail. We try drives. to find, we try to find that obstacle that's going to give us a little bit of a rush. We love off-roading at heart, um, you know, so we try to capture that whenever we do our our overlanding trips. And you mentioned that you would get a lot of that a real quick rebound with that wrong type of suspension setup. So it almost felt like it was going to throw the rear end of your Jeep over the front. And I've, I've yet to experience that with the Outback coil. But you had an experience on I-70 on our way to the Eastern Jeep uh, with the, the medical coils. I was. And I was even running Falcon 3.3s at the time. I was running them on a, about a medium setting. Uh, but when I, and I still had a two-door at the time when we yeah. did that trip to Moab. But with my tent on top, my roof rack, and all of my gear piled in, uh, we were literally coming down the pass, and as I was going around the turn, like my whole Jeep, like every ounce of weight, just decided it wanted to shift to one corner of my yeah. Jeep. And I almost lost control over it. Um, you know, and that was really one of my biggest things, was that maybe Metal Cloak is just not what I need for what I do with my Jeep. Now, that's not to say that 
I don't pack more stuff than I probably need for an overlanding trip. It's not to say that you don't. I mean, but I like to be comfortable when I go out on an overlanding trip. I want everything out there, whether I use it that trip or not. I would that's rather okay. have it and not need it than need it and not have it. And that's right. the way that I pack for my for our trips. And we know minimalists that go out with a, a hammock and, and some food and some water and they call it a day. And and that might be the great thing, greatest thing ever. And that might be the way to go. You know, eventually we might be there and be like, hey, you know, screw all this stuff. You might only need a hammock, a, a pack of lunch, and a fire right. and, and be done. But with a family of four, my wife and kids, um, that's not what's appealing to me. And I'm almost four, I'm over 40 years old, so I don't want to go out and rough it. You know right. what I mean? Um, I, I want to enjoy the outdoors and then, and have my kids enjoy the outdoors and my family enjoy the outdoors. And that's where, you know, we've decided to go with our overlanding experience. Um, is to get out and, and enjoy where we're at, enjoy the, the feeling of being free and not around people. We get in some way remote locations and in order to do so, we've tuned our vehicles and tuned our Jeeps where we know they're going to be reliable. Um, we know they're going to hold the weight. We know, you know, if it comes to an obstacle, we can do it. And, I, and like we talked uh, earlier that, you know, even Pritchett Canyon is probably a, one of the hardest off-road trails that I've been on. Um, I wouldn't hesitate to drag my JK through it. I mean, and just be smart about it. Pull cable where it needs to be pulled. Yeah. Uh, but I'm, you know, we've set them up to where, to make it. yeah, we've set them up to where they're going to handle those, those serious trails, but we're going to enjoy the journey to those trails. And that's, that's where we're at right now. Yeah, I mean, you're right, and what's crazy about the, well, it's not crazy, it's what I love about it, is that the overlanding community, the scene, everybody's vehicles is designed and set up specifically for what their needs are. Yep. Um, so like Levi mentioned earlier, you know, we're not trying to pitch a specific coil spring at you. The Outback that's worked for us, it may not work for the style or the design that you want to go for for your rig. Um, but we're just trying to get some information out there to everybody to give you a little bit of tips on what we've tried, what we haven't tried. Um, what we've done that didn't work, or as our vehicles progressed with what we decided we wanted to continue doing, we've kind of had to revamp that a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and you know, and I, I think our next episode we're going to talk about is tires. We're actually uh, leaving for Expo East on Thursday, and we're going to talk about tires. Yeah, uh, if you guys are going to be out there, feel free to stop by. We're actually, my Jeep's going to be uh, featured in the general, uh, general Tire booth um, there at Expo East. Um, we're really looking forward to getting down there, um, and yeah, we're gonna we'll, we'll swing by. We'll talk to a lot of vendors. We'll talk to a lot of rigs out there and get some information on tires and kind of what they do and yeah. how and it if, worked out for them. And you guys can scroll through the. We'll, we'll throw up some uh, still photos and kind of go through our, our journey and our tire uh, journey as well. Because to be honest with you, I think we've ran more tires than we have actual cool springs. Yes. <laughs> so it's it's hard to believe, but um, you know we've done all of this through trial and error. There's not a place you know on the internet or a store locally that we can go to and say, hey, this is what we want to do. What's your honest opinion about this overlanding setup? Uh, because there's not a whole lot of information out there. You know, there are some forms, um, and you can get out there and ask some questions, but, you know, what, what somebody else's opinion is, uh, is not going to be the best thing for you. And that's what we've found through this journey and through our, our lifestyle changes and our, our vehicle changes. And I think that's the most important thing to take out of this. I agree. I agree. So we'll see you guys at Expo East if you're there. And if you're not, please subscribe and like and stay tuned to our next episode. See you guys. Bye.